This is the connected uh, white, the connected white GDO V2-S uh, garage door opener. It's designed for the Genie linear overhead door and then uh, Chamberlain LiftMaster brands with either the green, gray, white, yellow, the square yellow learn button. It doesn't work with Chamberlain LiftMaster with the yellow button. That's not the square button. This device here is to make any, basically any dumb uh, garage door opener smart. It works with the, the wire where you have the contact closure and you push the button or whatever and it, it opens it up. So that's what we're working with today here. Um, it's uh, got an optical sensor that sees if the garage door is open. So you can see here, it basically points down at the door. And when this door rolls up, it'll see that, um, that reflect reflection of the optical sensor back in, into the unit and tell you the door's open. And it's, again, it's for residential uh, sectional garage door uh, opening, except Chamberlain and LiftMaster with the yellow learn button. And then it's got audible visual pre-close warnings like anything else does there. Uh, it's not uh, used for use with uh, one piece doors or swinging doors. I'm not sure what a one piece door is. My door is only one piece, but it looks like that. So it's fine. Uh, it works with uh, smart things like the uh, um, this one. <laughs> Don't want to say it. Home Assistant and Habitat. And what else we have on here? Uh, basically, mm -hmm. that's it. It's got an app for quick installation that you can get. Here's the QR code for getting that. So let's see what's in the box real quick. Uh, it comes with uh, some mounting screws for the unit itself. It's got the wire. Now, this is what you'll you'll connect to your garage door opener itself. It's basically just two, two wires under the contact closure on the garage door opener itself. And then the other end will go to the, um, the unit in here. There is a quick start guide with uh, information on how to get everything up and going. Uh, hopefully we're going to mount it. Uh, yep. Check Wi-Fi signal, mount the device, all of that kind of stuff. And then you connect wires and calibrate it. Uh, here is bubble wrap, more bubble wrap. This thing is much smaller than I thought it would be. Oops. And it is in plastic. So let me find something to open that with. And when I say plastic, I mean, it's in anti-static bag. This is really small. Um, well, here's a pin for size. I mean, it's just, it's just really tiny. I thought it would be bigger than this. Uh, looks like there's a light maybe in there for visual indicator. Here's where your um, your voltage goes, aux connections in door. I don't know what all these things mean yet. I'll get to that in the manual. But really, all you're going to do is you're going to mount this up to the ceiling just with these two uh, screws right here. And then assuming that this is probably the optical sensor, if it'll focus, you can't really see it. That might be the optical sensor, probably is. Yep. And that will point down at the door when it comes open. All right. We also have here our 12 watt adapter. What else is in here? Nothing. Oh, warnings. You can stick that on your wall, door, wherever it goes. And then this is the 12 volt power adapter, 12 watt power adapter. Yeah, it's also 12 volts, 12 volts, one amp. And it's just a standard wall wart. Plug it in, put this in the uh, unit, and now you have power. So this is the whole thing. You've got this unit that goes on the ceiling. Plug it in with this, obviously, and then connect this wire from here, somewhere on here, over to your garage door opener, and that is it. And then you get it configured into your Wi-Fi network, and you're ready to go. It does fit in, or does work in Home Assistant as well. So we'll be able to hook that up here in a little bit. So with that, let's go ahead and get it installed on the ceiling and uh, then we'll start playing with it. So that was the unboxing. One of the things I didn't show you in that is the actual um, template that comes with it. So you have a mounting template you can use, stick that on the ceiling and then you, it tells you exactly where to put the screws to stick this up, which is very nice. So you don't have to do any measuring or anything like that. Uh, also, when you look at in this manual, it does tell you that you need to... Um, scan this QR code to learn how to check the Wi-Fi status, or if you're installing it locally, 
uh, either be a home assistant and ESP home or, well, that's what it says here. You choose the local setup, scan this QR code to learn next steps. If you're familiar with anything related to uh, ESP home, um, you're going to have to flash ESP home on this device uh, here because it comes installed with uh, the connected firmware that allows it to talk to the connected cloud. So to do that, we're going to go through a series of steps here. First of all, we're going to just plug this in. Now, um, when I did this before, it's going to go through a series of beeps. My guess is it's powering it up and trying to connect the Wi-Fi. Uh, but anyway, we'll go through and let that sit there for a second. And then you'll go to the page that shows off that QR code, which is install.connected.io, uh, which you can't really see up here. And then you're going to choose which tool you're going to use or which device you're going to install this on, which is the uh, GDO White. And that gets gives you an option for the firmware platform. And that's going to be either the connected GDO firmware for smart things and Amazon integration via the cloud or you can do ESP home. You hear that back, uh, beep in the background, maybe. That's the device, I guess, attempting to connect to Wi-Fi or do something else. We're gonna choose ESP home firmware and then we're gonna have to connect to it. And we'll see what happens here. And you can see that there's a couple of different things here. It looks like COM7 is what I want. So I'm gonna try to connect to COM7. And it says install connected GDO white for ESP home. I'm gonna do that. Do I want to install it? Yes, I do. And it's going to go through the standard ESP home installation that you're used to seeing if you've ever installed anything with uh, ESP home on it before. Make sure you do all of this stuff before you install it on the ceiling because you're going to need to connect it to your computer via USB cable. Make sure you're using a USB cable that has data and power, not just data or not just power. A lot of times, I've had issues where I've tried to connect a cable and it was simply just power with no data. Now I'll give you some issues. So it'll go through this process, prepare the installation, then it'll do the installation on here. Once you do that, you should be, it should be able to be picked up by Home Assistant if you've got ESP Home installed. Uh, it goes without saying, um, hmm, well, that's interesting. I don't have the boot button on here, reset button on here. Let's see. Let's take a quick look. Uh, I don't see anywhere where I can do that. So let me, uh, let me try it again. We'll just go back and we'll try it again and see if it'll do it. I don't know if it's timing out or something else. Well, it did see it. You saw the COM port. So one of the things to tell it, to be able to tell whether you have a data connection or not is when uh, you saw that COM port pop up a second ago. Uh, allowing me to do that. So I may have gotten ahead of myself, but you're doing this live with me like I like to do in my videos. I don't have two of these to play with, so I'm doing it the first time on the video while I do this. I'm just looking through the manual. There's really nothing in the manual that tells you how to do this piece. I'm taking this um, from my experience with ESP Home and it flashing other devices, and it should work the same way. It's got that web flasher that you typically see um, nowadays with a lot of the ESP home devices. So we'll go here anyway, we'll just take a look. I wanna do the GDOY ESP home, I'm gonna connect. Now this is, this is what I'm looking for, COM7. And I know that because if I were to unplug this, it would, this would go away. So click on that. I'm going to try it now that it seems like it's settled down. It stopped beeping, opening and closing that COM port off and on. I'm going to connect again. And it's it, it must have found it because it wouldn't give me this option. So I'm going to install this on the GDOVS or V2-S. Do I want to install it? You bet I do. And we will see what it does now. This does take a few minutes typically, depending on the device. So it's not abnormal for it to be uh, a long process here, but for it to fail, that's kind of a problem. All right, so it failed again. Okay, so that's interesting. Now I've got a nice beep going. Heartbeat, it sounds like. One thing I didn't do before was plug the power in uh, and the USB. So I'm gonna try this process again while plugging the, while having it connected to the, the power connector and see what happens here. Maybe there's not enough power from the USB to do it. So let's try doing it without 
or with the power plug and plugged in. And maybe that's the problem or the issue. I, I just, there isn't a lot of information on how to do this or it didn't, it didn't show up for me correctly. Um, I don't know what it's beeping for. It's kind of concerning. Oof. The white light just flashed in my face. I don't know if you saw that. Maybe that's a sign it's installing. I don't know. We're all learning together, aren't we? It's just beeping. And nope, that didn't work either. I'm going to unplug this. It sounds like a video game. An old 8-bit video game. Okay. So we're having fun now, aren't we? So I'm going to plug it back into the USB port. And I'm going to try to go through this process again. GDO White, ESP Home, Connect, COM7. Now, if I unplug this, COM7 should go away. And Oh, it doesn't. Okay, so I'm dumb. Here we go. Let's try COM1. COM11. Now that might make a huge... Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I was using the wrong COM port, so now it's erasing. Um, it does, it's not intuitive. It doesn't tell you what to do, but having um, some experience, like I said, I can maybe make my way through it. Now you can see that it's actually doing its business here. It's doing the install. And it's not really, you can't really, it's not showing you anything other than just still sitting here. So no visual indication, but it is showing you on the screen what it's doing. So this will take two minutes, it says. Keep the page visible to prevent the slowdown. And then we'll be back after this is completed. Okay. Installation is complete. Yay. Now we'll go to next. And here we go with the beeping. And then you're going to configure Wi-Fi. So we'll do that here. Let me just go ahead and do that. Um, while you're looking at the pretty picture here, you can watch me move the mouse around. And we'll go with that. Connect. All right, so we're configuring Wi-Fi now. Saves me having to blur out some stuff if I do that. All right, so you're it's connected. So we can visit it now. Hello from future editing self. I just wanted to point out something that I noticed in the documentation here that's unclear. Uh, it says after connecting your GDO to Wi-Fi, Home Assistant should discover it automatically. Uh, what it makes it sound like to me is that you can actually go into the app, which they talk about up here, setting up the app, finding your device in the app, and then going in, finding it in Home Assistant automatically. And then you can go in and adopt it under ESP Home. It makes it sound like this uh, device already has ESP Home on it and the flashing wasn't necessary. However, what I did in the video to flash it is uh, just fine as well. So if you get the app, which I didn't do, I didn't mess with the app because I didn't want to mess with the app. Uh, you can try to get it connected to Wi-Fi and do it that way, or you can flash it like I did, connect it to Wi-Fi uh, that direction or whatever. So uh, up to you how you do it, but I just want to point out that there's a little bit of confusion about what it says in the documentation and whether or not you can just get the app find it, assign it to your Wi-Fi network, and then Home Assistant will find it that way. So just want to point that out, and then um, you can decide which way you want to go. All right, back to the video. Huh, this is kind of cool. So now what we're looking at here is actually the log. It's playing a song a boop over and over and over. Distance is out of range. You can see as I move my hand up and down, let me try again. Watch this right here. You can see, I think, I thought I saw it. S yep, sensor distance, zero. Move it up here. Sensor dis distance, 21, 29. Quite interesting um, what it's doing here. Um, 
So you do have the ability to go directly to the device by IP address and actually do look at the state of everything that's on here. So you could actually control the garage door here. There's your IP address, play sound, pre-close warning. I don't know if you're hearing all that, but I'm playing a video game, it sounds like. I guess that's, I don't know what that is, pre-close warning. And a little bright light goes with it. So you can actually, uh, you can see that now. If I play that pre-close warning. There's a light that flashes on it when it does that. All right, I'm just playing around now. This is probably boring to y'all, but it's interesting to see this. You have your Wi-Fi signal, garage door opener button, garage door range sensor, warning LED. I can turn that light on. I can strobe it. You can see it's strobing there. Turn that back off again. And then that's just a web browser theme. Okay, well, uh, now we should be able to go over to Home Assistant. So let's go do that now. And let's let's go ahead and take a look and see if Home Assistant has actually discovered this device. And we can do that by um, going to um, notifications over here. New devices discovered. Let's see if it's this. And sure enough, it is our garage door opener 860 460. So we can configure that and then ask if we want to do it. Sure. So I will put this in the garage. And now we have a garage door uh, opener under ESP Home, which is right here. And that's it. So now you have the status of the garage door opener here. You can see that it did that, whatever that is. STR output. So I guess on the back of here, there's um, there's an output, so you could probably add some sort of um, relay or do something here. That would be something to read about. And then when you turn it on, it actually illuminates the light that it's on. You can do a pre-close warning, which is what we just did a minute ago. It'll flash that. And um, yeah, and then you can open and close it. It tells you that your wired sensor is currently open. So you can actually put a wired sensor I believe it's um, right here. You can put a wired sensor uh, right in this spot right here. And this you can use for other kinds of things. So if you wanted a wired sensor for your door in addition to this, which is the ultrasonic sensor, you can do that. And uh, then when you look at the Home Assistant page, it tells you the status of the wired sensor. And then this is something we'll play with whenever we get it installed to see what the, uh, the distance needs to be between the top of the door and the uh, the sensor here, we'll, we'll need to set that so we can tell how far uh, the door is uh, from the sensor. And then when the door opens, then the sensor will pick it up. So we'll have to adjust that in a little bit. So that's the, that's the unboxing. That's the uh, flashing ESP home on it. And then um, getting it in here and, and discovered by Home Assistant, which was automatic, by the way. So now we need to mount it on the ceiling. I'll spare you the agony of me doing that. Uh, and then we will go back and uh, I will show you what it looks like installed. And then we'll play around with opening and closing the door with that. So let's get to that piece. See you back in a minute after this has been installed. So in TV time, in just a few seconds. All right, you can see that I've mounted this on the ceiling up there. It's very tiny. And then it's right below where the garage door would be. So when the garage door opens, the garage door opens to this point and it looks down on it. And then I'm a little bit, probably too close to the bar. It says two feet from the bar, but it's, it's enough that it doesn't register the bar. That's uh, this right here. You don't want it to register that bar. It's part of the door opening. And then the wiring just kind of follows along here, comes down the trail and it comes down the bracket there and comes around over here. And then inside this cover, you can see that the wiring goes inside there into this little spot down in here. And that just connects to the switch where the switch was, the wall switch. And you can see where that wall switch is over there. It uses the same wiring as the wall switch and goes into that, just like any other garage door that's like this. Okay, sometime later and we have everything installed. 
Uh, you just saw the little bit of footage of where I had that installed on the ceiling. It's very easy. Just put the template up there, a couple screws and wire it in, plug it into the power and you're good to go. We've already done all the hard work, which was getting into Home Assistant. All right, so now we can see right away that the garage door is currently uh, closed. You can maybe see that from that icon. Whoops. Let's try that again. Let's blow that up a little bit. And then I'm also going to show you the actual garage door as it functions here off to the side. So the garage door is closed. If I push the open button, it's immediate and the garage door here will start opening. So we'll click that now. Oops. And now you can see that the garage door is opening and it's in an opening status here and it's waiting for it to register that ultrasonic sensor. And then you'll see here, once that's done, you'll see that the garage door actually shows to be open. And now you've got an open picture here. And of course the garage door is open. Now, if you come down here, you can also see that there's a distance of about 0.96 meters. It's fluctuating a little bit. I think it's lighting or whatever. Um, it's fluctuating a little bit on that sensor. You adjust the calibration of this sensor to determine what the distance is. So I can set that to about 0.94. So I'm going to have to experiment with this a little bit and make sure that it, it actually is um, consistent and that it alerts every time the door is open. You can get the wired sensor. If you want to add an optional wired sensor, I think it talks about it of, over here. You can use a wired contact sensor sold separately. Whoops, I got to show you. You can use a, con a wired contact sensor sold separately or maybe even a limit sensor and it can be put in right here if you want to use that wired sensor and then that wired sensor will show up here. If for some reason you have an issue with the ultrasonic sensor because of distance between that sensor and your garage door, when it opens, you can maybe use the wired sensor to take care of that. All right, so we have this open right now and I'm going to click on it for closing and then it'll it'll go through its pre-close warning, which is that sound and the flashing light, which you won't see. It's too hard to see in the, in the little image I'm showing you, but it actually does do that. So there'll be a little bit of a delay um, while that's there and I've got it pressed to close it. It's doing the pre-close warning. Now you see it switch to closing and you see the door actually closing right here. And then down here, you'll see that the sensor distance has changed to much lower than that 0.94 or whatever it is. I walked underneath here and stood right below the sensor and it showed me as a 1.4 uh, meters down below. So that means that if you set this properly, it'll register your door. But if you pull a car in here or walk below it or something, it shouldn't register. Uh, it shouldn't register the car as the door being open. So you, you'll have to calibrate the sensor to whatever objects you have below that ultrasonic sensor in the garage once it's parked in there. So right now it shows unknown because it's it's farther than the sensor can actually read right now. And then the good news, you've got a Wi-Fi signal of 96% and fluctuates, of course, and then 56 dBm. And that's it. So uh, we've now installed it and added to the Home Assistant. You can add this to your automations. I have a number of automations uh, that I use with a garage door opener. This makes this, again, this white replaces the, um, or makes this, some of those smart or not smart garage door openers in, uh, makes them smart. Now I will say that I have a Genie and it has the Genie Plus or whatever their cloud thing is. The first week I moved in this new house with that new garage door opener, they had some sort of cloud failure. I had no desire to be uh, connected to their cloud anymore. So I'm going to use this connected as my daily driver and see how it works out. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments. Um, and uh, what else? Those of you that are not subscribers, hit that subscribe button. Helps the algorithm, helps the videos get out there and makes the channel grow. So with that, we will see you on the next one.